So you've bought a fitness tracker, maybe the generic ones, as you can see here, and you want to know if the heart rate measurement is accurate or how does it compare to the more premium brands. For example, here I have a Huawei Band 3 Pro. Um, over here I have a Fitbit Inspire HR and I'm going to compare these trackers together. This is the Sky Grand. This is the one that I got on Amazon. This is what the package looks like and there's another one that looks almost identical although this one is not part of the test. If you want to see how these two are compared please check out one of my other videos. All right so in this video I'm going to take these three trackers. I'm going to get on the treadmill. I'm going to measure my heart rate and I'm going to compare it to the Polar chest strap. The reason why I wear the Polar is I find that this particular Polar with the Polar app is very accurate. So I'm going to use this as the reference measurement. While these on the wrist, um, I tend to find they drift or they're a little bit delayed in terms of heart rate. So let's compare them. I'm going to do the exercise. I'm going to plot the graphs and I'll show you the difference between these three trackers versus the Polar. So you'll get to see all of these results in the video. Right, so on my left hand I have the Fitbit Inspire HR. I've got the Sky Grand tracker over here. So these two are on the left hand and on the right arm I have the Huawei Band 3. I then will wear the chest strap on my chest and I will measure the Polar via the Polar app. Now each one of these watches uses its own particular app. This one uses the Fitbit app, this one uses the VeryFit Pro, and this one uses the health app provided by Huawei. While I do the training, you will see my heart rate live using the Polar app on the phone. Right, so there you can see the treadmill. I'm going to get on the treadmill and do some training. And I'm now going to start all the trackers, hopefully within the same time. Look, give or take one, one and a half seconds. Right, so starting all of these at the same time is quite challenging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this one and I'm going to let it get to 10 seconds. Three, four. Right, so that's at 10. So the first minute of the training is not going to be counted. My most important aim here is to try and get these all within the same time scale. Because afterwards I'm going to be comparing 1 minute, 1 minute 30, 2 minutes, 2 minutes 30, and so forth. So I'm trying to match the time scales. Now the Huawei counts down three seconds while the Amazon uh, SkyTrack wants you to press and hold for three seconds while the Fitbit starts immediately. So I'm going to get the Fitbit started and then I'm just going to immediately pause it. All of the trackers are going to be set to the run feature. So I'm just going to get it started. Yes, run. And I'm going to let it count to about eight, six, seven, eight. Okay, seven and a half, that's fine. So I've got seven and a half, I've got 10 there, and I'm gonna synchronize these so that they can all start at a similar time. So indoor run. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, okay. thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. All right. So these are within one second of each other. Forty-three, forty-four, forty-four. Right. This one, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty-one, fifty. This one's one second ahead. This one here, 58, 59, yeah, within one second. All right, so here goes the train, starting at one minute. Now, if you're wondering what this is, uh, because this uh, Amazon one doesn't come with an app that gives the same uh, diagnostics as the Huawei and the Fitbit, I'm going to manually just note the heart rate on the intervals. So it's coming up to two minutes and I'm going to start it there and I'm going to note the heart rate manually. 69. Okay, coming up to three minutes 30. Huawei is 109 and the Amazon one is 78 and the Fitbit is 110. 
coming up to four and a half minutes. Fitbit 116, Skydran 117, coming up to six and a half minutes. Heart rate's about 134, 135. 133, 112, and the Huawei is 123. Coming up to seven and a half minutes, I'm 143 there. And the track is, I've got 142, 111, and 134. I'm going to rest for one minute, just having a look there, 146, 144, there's good correlation there, over here, 114, 141, that's not correlating, 145, 143, 138, quite good, right, I'm going to try and increase it quite a bit now, okay, coming up to 10 minutes, 124, 118, Okay, coming up to ten and a half minutes. I'm on the polar arm at 135 and climbing. Let's have a look at the Huawei. It's 131. And the Fitbit 135. Sky Grand not keeping up. 118. Coming up at 11 and a half minutes. Sky Grand is 113. The Fitbit seems to correlate. 147, 150. The Huawei 150 matching it exactly. It seems to oscillate between 112, 118, 113, 115. Right, I'm going to let my heart rate completely recover down to 110. There you can see the time is 13 minutes. Heart rate is 140. Looking at the tracker, 138. 138 on the uh, Fitbit, 117. I don't know why. 138. Right, coming up to 15 and a half minutes. Okay, hop off. 151. 148, 113, 144. Right, so before I go into the heart rate data and the graphs of each one of these devices, I'm just going to show you the summary. This is the information that you get after doing the training. Normally, it shows it on the tracker itself, or you can pick it up on the app. All right, so looking at the Sky Grand, it rated me at 1020 steps, 1020 steps. The Fitbit got 1281, the Huawei 1245. The Polar does not measure these steps. Right, average heart rate, they're pretty close. 116, 123, 121, 121. Maximum heart rate, again, not too bad. 149, 157, 159, 159. Although the Sky Grand is 10 off the Polar. Now, I'm taking the Polar as the reference. The reason why is because I have used an ECG machine to verify my heart rate and the Polar chest strap. So I'm taking this as the reference. So I'm going to call the 159 to be a true measurement. So I'm then saying the Sky Grand is 10 off the Mac, the correct measurement. All right, the calories, Skygrand 69, Fitbit 99, Huawei 115, and the Polar 198. Now, this is the interesting story. You see, even though the average heart rate and the maximum heart rate are within range, um, if you look at those calories, and I'm going to tell you what the problem with those calories are shortly when you see the graph. Um, and then the duration, I try, as I said, don't be too worried that they're not exactly the same 17 minutes, 19 seconds, 17 minutes, 18 seconds, 17, 28. It's not such a big problem because remember that when you finish this session, it's uh, within a few seconds of each other and I stop doing any activity. So maybe you may have squeezed out one more calorie there between uh, these two because the Huawei did go on for another uh, say 10 seconds but uh, I wasn't walking anymore so I, it's not like I carried on running I stopped 
and then I switched off each tracker. Some of the trackers take a little bit more time to switch off. Look, the Polar, I did pause it. Unfortunately, it actually was in my pocket and it unpaused, but the heart rate monitor was off. And you'll see on the graph that when I show you the, um, the graph, you'll see that it does not measure when the heart rate is off. It actually cancels those measurements. All right, so where did I get all this information from? Right, starting with the Polar. Here is the Polar. You can have a look. Um, there is my maximum heart rate 159 you see here is the uh, graph and can you see the shape of this graph started slowly look we we said we're only starting from two minutes so there we go training started probably at about 130 or somewhere there but i only actually plotted graphs from two minutes and when i say plotted graphs i'll show you what i'm referring to shortly i will show you the graphs of these trackers on the same set of axes but i first want to show you where i got the data from right so here we go this is the polar so what i did is i went manually and i said two minutes 96 beats per minute then i went to two minutes 30 then i said all right two minutes 30 103 and i did that all the way till the 17 and a half minutes right unfortunately i was a bit delayed here in uh, in switching this off so you might find that the calories are a little bit higher so i'm not taking the calories seriously in this little test what i'm interested in is the heart rate and the shape of the graph the calories is just extra information all right so just to be 100 percent accurate as i said uh this did carry on recording, but there was no heart rate uh, um, belt worn. I did take the belt off, so it doesn't count it, as you can see. It actually doesn't count this, because if it had to have counted a zero heart rate, the average heart rate would not be 121. It's clever enough to know that this means the belt is off. So um, I'm just fixing that like that. So if you have a look at the waveform, you can see that I increased and then I had a break, then I did a quick burst, then I had a break, then a quick burst. So this is what we're looking for. Now, if I have a look at the Fitbit, I followed the same method. At two minutes, I recorded the heart rate, 86, then 2.30, then three minutes, 3.30, 4.00, 30 and so forth until i got all the plots right up until the end of the session at say 17 minutes 30 and i plotted it all the way so that kind of follows a similar <clears throat> trajectory or trend as the polar so these were seemingly on uh, superficially evaluating it. it looks like they correlate now if you're wondering what all this is interestingly enough on the uh, fitbit even though i paused the session it is it does carry on recording so this was uh, the tracker on my table uh, this is this actually wasn't being worn well it sometimes gets these spurious responses of actually uh, it's actually just noise coming through as a heart rate but keeping in mind that the fitbit is also clever enough to note that the training time is only when you start and stopped the watch that's why it says there's 17 minutes and 18 seconds it knows that the training ended at 17 minutes and 18 seconds so somewhere about there so all of this extra stuff is just for it you know it does carry on measuring your your steps and your heart rate for the rest of the day but this doesn't count as part of my test i only measure the 17 and uh, 17 minutes 18 seconds there's my max my, my average heart rate 123 right now having a look at the huawei health app you can see there was my training uh, duration 17 minutes 28 the calories the average speed all right so there you can see the um, average heart rate 121 the steps but what we want to look at is the chart you can see that following the same method that i did with the polar and with the fitbit i tracked it you see there it will give you the time say two minutes and 30 seconds 108 and then i did this in the same format as i did the polar and the fitbit Right, for the Sky Grand, I used the VeryFit Pro app, and now you can see there is my training record, and if I click on it, it, it doesn't give you the same uh, detail as the uh, Fitbit or the Polar or the Huawei, so it doesn't allow me to interrogate that graph. Also, um, I've tried other VeryFit Pro apps, and I also am unable to interrogate the graph. So I just want to explain to you what I worked out. Now, if you have a look here, you can see that it does show an increase, then a decrease, then a sudden increase. Then there's a bit of noise there. It's almost like a mess. It doesn't quite follow the trend that the Polar and the Fitbit and the Huawei do. And you'll see it when I show you the plots. The other thing is, if you have a look at the shape of this graph, it's, it almost shows you that it, it 
does take quite a few measurements. Yet when you look at the um, the readings that I got when I looked physically looked at the watch, it, it kept getting stuck at like one one two or one one five one one six. I I don't think I ever saw it in my entire training go over one twenty. So here on the graph, it's showing that it went over 120, yet on my arm, the display on the watch didn't. So there seems to be an inconsistency in terms of what's shown on this graph and what's shown on the display of the watch. So that's a bit of a concern for me because here it shows, uh, I mean, that's, that's 153. So there it shows like that's probably in the 140s. I mean, most of these are above 120. This this uh, section here, I mean, it's actually rated it under cardio. And uh, yet when I was doing my training, every time I looked at the watch, I mean, is it statistically possible that every time I looked at the watch, it just happened to have dipped? I don't think so because look at this. This is like at least two minutes and that is over 120. But when I looked at the watch, Sky Grand, it kept saying saying one one eight one. Anyway, I'll show you the graph, and you can make up your mind for yourself. Right. So let me explain the graphs quickly, so I can show you the plot of these. The Sky Grand is in green, so this is the Sky Grand over there. You can see the green curve. The Fitbit inspires in the grey. There's the grey curve. The Huawei band. There's the orange one, and then the Polar is the blue one now on the left hand side this forms the horizontal scale so if you uh, if you have a look at the bottom of the graph this is the time scale in point five, uh, point 0.5 minutes so it's 30 second interval so that's 30 so that's half a minute one minute one and a half minutes or one minute 30 two minutes Two minutes 30 now i only started all the plots at two minutes because that's when the training like i would call it the, the you know when i actually started running on the treadmill so that was the starting point and also gave it uh, each one of the trackers time to settle in sometimes they take a bit of time to get their reference measurement so they were actually being measured uh from before one minute so this should be counted as a, as a reasonable measure because they had already been on the wrist for a minute at least a minute all right going all the way down so i got the sky grand uh, amounts these amounts I got from manually looking at the watch remember I was running on the treadmill and then at each 30 second interval I looked at the watch read what was on the screen and wrote it down and as you can see there's not even one of these amounts is over 120 and that's why I'm wondering if there's some delay or problem in terms of what you see versus what uh, gets transmitted to the app because on the app it showed uh, over 120 whereas here when I looked at the screen and you've seen it in the video I never got to see it uh, I never got to see over 120 all right looking at the Fitbit the Huawei and the Polar this uh, data I got from either the app like the Huawei or the Fitbit from the website and the Polar also from the website all right so here are the plots and I'll just show it to you now Okay, firstly, just having a look at all of them. So there's the Sky Grand, there's the Polar, there's the uh, Fitbit Inspire, and there is the Huawei Band 3. So I'm just going to remove and show you them individually now. So let's look at the Polar versus the Sky Grand. Right, so I'm going to take the Polar as reference. Now, if you look at the Sky Grand, now from, from this curve, you can see that this is almost useless because it doesn't show any of the trends um, it doesn't show my heart rate increasing when I did the first uh, uh, physical exertion then I rested then I did the second the third so I almost feel like this this data that is showing on the screen of the watch is almost fictitious because if you look at the app while it doesn't exactly match this polar it at least goes above 125 so somewhere there's a problem here all right, now let's have a look at the next one. Now, have a look at that. This is the Polar and the Fitbit is in the gray. And they're almost identical. Actually, a very good job here on the second test. I've already done this test before and you can have a look at my video where the Fitbit wasn't able to track the heart rate that well. But here it did it well. But what do you notice? It's just a delay. It's like a 
uh, almost a one minute delay between these two graphs. And you probably think, no, I've made a mistake uh, with the with the codings, but let me just sh show you what I've identified. So let's just take four minutes. Can you see that at four minutes, the Fitbit was 106. Now, if you look at the website, you'll see here, four minutes, uh, 107, all right, so you can you can see there, uh, call it 401, 106, right, so that's correct, four minutes. So let's go to, say, the peak here, like nine, nine minutes, 145. Now let's look at the data, nine minutes, there you go, 145. So I have not made a mistake with this. However, what I noticed is as follows. When I reviewed the video of me doing the test, I can see that the display on the watch actually was giving the correct uh, heart rate. So it seems like between the coding of the watch to the uh, when it uploaded to the uh, to the phone and uploaded to the internet, it seems like it, there's a problem. Like it shifted up a bit. Because look, I'll show you here. Okay, I've just got this in slow motion. I'm just going to show you an example of this. Right, so this is approaching 12 minutes. I'm going to read out the Fitbit uh, display. So it's 155. So the Fitbit is showing 155 at just coming on 12 minutes. Now look here. 12 minutes, 149. You see, the 155 is at 13 minutes or even 13 and a half. So it seems like there's a problem here as well with the Fitbit, the way the software um, deals with maybe the pause button or something like that. And I'll show you one more time. Okay, so look there. 13 minutes, 47 seconds should have a heart rate of 111. Now look here. 13 minutes and 47 seconds there. Uh, 40, okay, call it 46 Look at that heart rate, 153. So you can see that what's shown on the Fitbit display versus what's shown on the graphing, the exercise detail, do not correlate. So there seems to be a problem here as well with the Fitbit in terms of how the uh, graph is shown in terms of the time the horizontal axis in terms of time. I'm not sure if it's because I pressed the pause button, but overall, I'm just reading what I see. Right, so if I show you one more time, if I go back a few frames, you can see I'm coming up to 6 minutes 30. Look there, uh, on the Polar, 6 minutes 25. Yes, it is in slow motion because I just want to capture the screenshot. Come 27, 28. Now look at the Fitbit display there. 133 at 6 minutes 29. That's what I read off the watch itself. 133 and it says the time of the training is 6 minutes 29 but why when I come here and I go to 6 minutes 29 they call it 6 minutes 28 it says 121 you see there seems to be a problem here with the Fitbit and how the data is shown on this horizontal scale all right so moving on now the Huawei right so it starts off almost identical overshoots a little bit correct Lost out this part over here, but look how close it is to the Polar in terms of synchronizing with it. So the Huawei definitely does show correlation, although as you can see there, I mean that is quite a big difference. I mean it's it's picked up my maximum heart rate there at 145, but it's uh, it's closer to over 150, almost one yeah 153. Um, there again, almost matching it. So I would say that it's it's quite good, but it does have some gaps in the graph. Now, you might be wondering, maybe I made a mistake with the Fitbit data. Maybe I got the time scale wrong. I've checked it twice. This graph has this delay. Not sure why, but it's got a delay there. All right. So here you can see the three trackers versus the Polar. A um, little bit concerned there with the Sky Grand, and in order to to give it the benefit of the doubt, I actually did another test, and uh, this is what I found. Right, this was another training I did, and I also uh, noticed this problem: this heart rate uh, 
what's shown on the watch versus what's shown on this uh, graph here don't really correlate this was on another day and as you can see um, the graph is different and you can see this was mostly a cardio exercise so the sky grand on this second training day it did increase above 120 i saw it on my wrist saying like 135 but then it would suddenly drop it would drop to like 110 and it would stay there while everybody else, all the other trackers were in the 140s, the Sky Grand was showing me on the screen 110 or 115. But then when I look on the graph, it was supposed it was actually higher. So the other challenge is that the VeryFit Pro app, the one that I used, um, and I tried two additional VeryFit apps, they don't allow you to interrogate the graph, like to zoom in or to look at specific uh, time intervals. And then I didn't find a website where you can create a profile and maybe get that data on a, on a full screen. So there's some limitations there in terms of the way I experienced that, uh, that platform. Right, I have done a similar test in the past, and you're welcome to look at it on my channel, where I compared the Fitbit, the Huawei Band 3 Pro, and the uh, Polar chest strap. And uh, the results were also quite, uh, quite interesting and, and surprising. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to retest it. I'm going to take the Sky Grand and then I'm going to take a similar one called Fit Fort. And I'm going to compare those together and compare them to maybe the Band 3 or the Polar and the Fitbit or whatever combination it makes sense. But the reason why I'm going to take the Fit Fort and the Sky Grand are they're kind of the two I don't want to use the word generic, but they, they don't, they're not falling into the premium brand. They, they're kind of, uh, these, these cheaper ones seem like they do the same thing and, and, and uh, have the same specifications. So I'm going to do that to make sure. Um, please just note that the, you know, one has to repeat uh, tests over and over again. I'm definitely not saying these results are authoritative. You watch the, the demonstration. You saw the way I've done it. You're going to have to make up your mind here. I'm not prepared to uh, make a definitive um, a conclusion here until I've done further tests. Thanks for watching. Cheers.